Today, we're going to talk about some chemical messengers called sirtuins. And sirtuins are these critical molecules that play a huge role in our cell cycle, our inflammation levels, our metabolism, our ability for certain types of cells to heal and recover and repair, for DNA and epigenetic repair. These chemical messengers are so important for the overall function and performance of our cellular life. That being said, hyperbaric oxygen can play an enormous role in stimulating those sirtuins to start their chemical messaging cascade of events that helps to keep our body healthy over the long term. And that's really what this is about. It's about can we stimulate a pathway that allows the body to repair itself over the course of our life so that while, yes, we're, many of us are looking for longevity, what we're really looking is for quality of life. And what are the keys to maintenance of quality of life or even improving quality of life, even though over time, obviously, we continue to age. And sirtuins are some of those chemicals that can play a big role in that process. So just a little bit of detail. There are seven sirtuins. These are class three histone acetylases, which basically means that they play a role in gene expression. Which genes should we turn on? Which genes should we be turning off? If you understand genes or our DNA, those are the instructions for life. And so certain cells have certain roles. As an example, and this is to simplify things a great deal, but your liver might be in charge of, let's say, detoxification. Your brain is in charge of computing things. Your muscles are in charge of moving your body. And so you want your liver cells to function like liver cells, not like muscle cells. You want your brain cells to function like brain cells, not like intestinal cells. And every cell has in it the instructions for every other cell inside your body. So how do we maintain the fact that liver cells only get the instructions for your liver, that muscle cells only get the instructions for muscles, that brain cells only get the instructions for brain cells? Well, we wrap all of our DNA and we only show the instructions for each individual cell's function, many of which are, are controlled by these histone molecules or ultimately these methylation molecules. And sirtuins can play a huge role in which of those instructions should we be showing and when and why. They also play a huge role in controlling inflammation, controlling the cell cycle. There are certain times where a cell becomes dysfunctional and that dysfunctional cell needs to be killed in order to allow for a new stem cell to move in. It could play a role in the mobilizing of those stem cells into that area once those other cells are killed off. And so sirtuins are constantly helping to manage the healthy life cycle of a cell so that as you continue to age, you can maintain your quality of life throughout those years. The key here is what could we be doing to maintain and keep strong sirtuin signaling throughout our entire life, making sure that we can keep healing and recovering and repairing because we know that life is going to have stressors. It's going to have challenges. It's going to have chemical and emotional and physical toxicity. There are going to be times that are going to really challenge our health. And not only do we want to get through them, we want to get through them and thrive because of them. And if we can create a system around that, then as we age, we can also find that we get healthier over time not sicker over time. One of the most important stimulators of sirtuins is adversity. In other words, as our body goes through these challenges, as long as those challenges are enough to stimulate a change, but not so strong that we can't recover from it, that adversity helps strengthen our bodies, strengthen our cells, strengthen our immune system, and ultimately helps us thrive and get through and, and ready for the next challenge that can come our way. This is considered hormesis. For those of you that are not familiar, hormesis is this process where we get a stressor, the stressor signals change, that change signals a re adaptive response, and as a result of that adaptive response, we can get over that hump, and now we're stronger and ready for the next one. Exercise might be the easiest way to understand hormesis. If you're doing the right type of exercise, the right intensity of exercise, the right timing of your exercise, and you're getting proper recovery in between your exercise bouts, exercise breaks down muscle tissue. It's supposed to. But as a result of that breakdown of muscle tissue, that's the stimulation for repair and recovery. And as long as all those other pieces are in place, the next time you go to exercise, you should be a little faster and a little stronger, ready for a little bit more of a challenge. Our whole body and our whole life Life should be designed that way. We should cause hormetic change through exercise. We should cause hormetic change and adaptation 
through changing our food structure and our food plan. We should create hormetic adaptation through the modalities that we use. That's why so many of these powerful tools like sauna and ice baths, right? They're temperature regulation challenges, hyperbaric oxygen, oxygenation challenges to our system, challenge through food, challenge through exercise. Creating hormetic adaptation throughout our entire lifespan is ultimately going to be the key to the maintenance of our health and the maintenance and improvement of our quality of life throughout all of those years. There are now numerous studies that show specifically hyperbaric oxygen's effect on sirtuin activation. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that one of those amazing tools is hyperbaric oxygen. And through hyperbaric oxygenation and through stimulating sirtuins, specifically SIRT1, we understand that hyperbaric has this anti-inflammatory effect that we've talked about. It has this stem cell upregulation effect that we've talked about. It has this mitogenesis, the increased mitochondrial size, shape, and density in within our cells. It has this ability to increase stem cells, both central nervous system as well as mesenchymal stem cells. We know that it has this angiogenic effect because it stimulates growth factors like VEGF, but also growth factors in your nervous system like BDNF or growth factors in your immune system like PDGF. Understanding that sirtuins, specifically SIRT1, number one is NAD dependent, meaning it needs NAD to be stimulated properly. And so again, when we supplement with NAD precursors like NMN or NR, or we use NAD IV, we can be adding raw materials into the system that also help stimulate sirtuin. So hyperbaric oxygen can help stimulate sirtuin pathways. NAD or the availability of NAD can help stimulate sirtuin activity. And as a result of that process, we can see certain changes like changes in the oxidative pathway. We know that too much oxidative stress can cause damage to your cells, damage to your cell membranes, damage to your mitochondria, damage to your mitochondrial membranes, damage to your epigenetics, and damage to your nuclear membrane that surround and protect your DNA and epigenome. SIRT1 has a very protective role. It helps to preserve and protect those cell membranes and the organelles within those cell membranes, or mitochondria within the mitochondrial membrane, or the DNA within the nuclear membrane. And so SIRT1 helps to protect the cell from that oxidative damage. So as we stimulate SIRT1, we have this cellular protective mechanism protecting us from increased oxidation. Also, we know that SIRT1 helps upregulate the body's own antioxidant system. Chemicals like superoxide dismutase, SOD, or catalase, or glutathione, those are all chemicals that our bodies create to help reduce oxidative load or free radical damage. And we know that SIRT1 helps to stimulate our body's capacity to fight those free radicals with our own antioxidant. So we get a whole balancing of the oxidative pathways inside of our body when we stimulate SIRT1 properly. We also know that we get changes in cellular metabolism. It helps improve mitochondrial function. It helps impact the efficiency and ultimately the capacity for the mitochondria to make energy. We know for sure that whether it's through chronic illness or the aging process, that we get decreases in ATP production, decreases in the ability for the cells to make the energy that they need to function normally. And if we can improve cellular energy, we can improve cellular function. And as all the cells in your body improve cellular energy and cellular function, you get improvement in the organism. And so now the person has improved capacity to heal and improved capacity to function normally and healthfully. And we also know that sirtuins can help play a role in the cell cycle life. There are plenty of times where cells become dysfunctional. That happens inside every single one of us. The body is supposed to be able to recognize dysfunctional cells and either help them heal so that they become normal, healthy contributors to their cellular community or to create apoptosis to kill that cell. So we know that SIRT1 can help stimulate the pathways of either cellular repair and getting that cell back on track or cellular apoptosis to kill that cell and then stimulate the stem cells to come move into that area and to actually help rebuild the cellular community by bringing new naive stem cells into the area, help them differentiate into whatever tissue or cell type that they need to be. And now we get a younger, more vibrant type of cell taking over where that uh, dysfunctional cell once lived reviving that area and creating normal cellular activity for whatever that cell type or tissue type might have been. We know that 
creating adversity, again, whether that's adversity through exercise or adversity through food or adversity through these different modalities that you and I all love, by creating cellular adversity, we can help stimulate sirtuins. And if we can help stimulate sirtuins, we can get a whole downstream effect of cellular signaling that ultimately not only allows us to adapt to an ever-changing world and an ever-changing environment that you and I all live in, but also just to help create the strongest, healthiest, ver most vibrant version of ourselves so that yes, we will continue to age, but as importantly or more importantly, we get to maintain and improve our quality of life throughout all of our years. And I can say for me, and I'm sure for most of you too, that's what we're really looking for. We're looking for quality of life. And of course, hyperbaric, along with these other modalities, can all play a critical role, non-controversial and proven, and a synergistic role to be a pathway that helps us all achieve those pathways that we're all trying to stimulate so that we can stay as healthy as we can for as long as we can. Hope you found that helpful, and I'm looking forward to our next video. Take care.